All right. So what we're going to uh, look at is a different way of writing out a linear system, which involves a few matrices. All right. We've already taken a look at one way of writing a linear system using a matrix, and that kind of matrix was an augmented matrix. So for example, with a system such as 2x plus 3y equals 4 and x minus 5y equals 7, this would generate a 2 by 3 matrix. And the third column will go to the right of this vertical bar and consist of the constant values, which are 4 and 7, to the right of it. And to the left of the vertical bar, we'll go the coefficients of the variables. Okay, the coefficients of x will be lined up in the first column, coefficients of y in the second column. All right, so that is what we've looked at so far in terms of uh, rewriting the linear system using a matrix. But I do want to let you know that the two equations uh, can be derived with some matrix multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a 2 by 2 matrix. And in this matrix, we'll go the coefficients of x and y. And I'll line them up in the same columns. So first column, 2 and 1, second column, 3 and negative 5. Now to the right of this 2 by 2, I'm going to make another matrix and it's going to be a two by one, two rows, one column. And in the first row, I'm going to put the variable x, second row, the variable y. And I'm going to say that this is equal to a third matrix, which is another two by one, and it's going to consist of the constant values, four and seven. Now, I'm going, I'm going to show you that this actually does produce this system right here. After you've done some matrix multiplication and equated corresponding entries. So first of all, just a quick reminder uh, to check that the matrix multiplication on the left is legit. We compare the sizes. This is a two by two to a two by one. The inside numbers match, so the multiplication will work out and the resulting matrix will be a two by one. So let's start the multiplication. We're going to multiply the first row's entries to the variables x and y. Okay, 2 corresponds to the x, which is why I'm going to write 2x, and 3 corresponds to the y, so, which is why I'll write 3y, and remember we add up all the products. Now to um, make sure that you're not confused that this is uh, one entry instead of you know two columns with uh, the entries 2x and 3y in them. I'm going to surround the expression in parentheses. And I'll do a similar multiplication with the bottom rows, entries 1 and negative 5. I'll multiply them to the variables x and y, in which case we'll get 1x plus negative 5y. x minus 5y will be the simpler form of that. And again, this is just one single solid entry, which is why I'm putting this in parentheses. Now, if this is equal to this two by one matrix with those constant values, then the only way that these two matrices could be equal to each other is if they have the same size and the entries correspond to each other. So let's assume that they are equal, okay? First of all, the first matrix is a two by one, second matrix, it's a two by one as well. So the sizes are okay. And if we assume that the corresponding entries are equal to each other, then we're able to say that two X plus three Y is equal to four and X minus five Y is equal to seven. Or in short, the equality of these two matrices tells us that two X plus three Y is equal to four and X minus five Y is equal to seven. And boom, that is the original system. Okay. 
So I want to expound upon that product on the left being set equal. So, so I want to expound upon the equation that I formed there. Um, that equation is known as a matrix equation. And generically speaking, we write a matrix equation as follows. A, which is going to be a matrix. I'll define what kind of matrix in a second. X, which I'm going to write a little half arrow above it. As we'll see later on in this chapter, this is vector notation. And once we get to that section, we'll dive into that a little more deeply. And I'm going to say that this is equal to, um, and I'll indicate the column matrix of constants with lowercase b with another half arrow above it. So again, vector notation. Now, there are three matrices here, okay? On the left, the matrix A, it's known as a coefficient matrix. Okay, so those will consist of the coefficients of the variables. The matrix X is referred to as the column matrix of unknowns, aka variables. The matrix B is known as the column matrix of constants. Now, <clears throat> um, I, I want to kind of throw us back to a very, very familiar scenario. Keep in mind, when we're solving a system, we're trying to find values for all the variables. Now, let's say that this were not this, but, but let's look at this equation, 3x equals 12, okay? If I wanted to solve for x, what's one thing I could do? You can uh, divide by three. You can divide by three. And we get x equals four. So you could isolate x by dividing each side by three. Now, if we have ax equals b, we're not able to solve for x via division. In other words, it's not as simple as dividing each side by a. If you do that, you're going to eventually hear this. Anybody know that song? <laughs> it's from the Coffin Dancers. But anyway, um, you can't divide by a matrix is what I'm trying to get at. So what do we do then if, if we, if we want to isolate the variables with, you know, a matrix equation, what's a different route? I'm going to go back to the 3x equals 12. Instead of dividing by 3, what we could do is multiply each side by the inverse of 3. And what I mean by inverse is the multiplicative inverse. So in other words, is there something I can multiply 3 by in order to turn it to 1? Because really, x equals 4 is the same as saying 1x equals 4. 1 third, yeah. You can multiply each side by 1 third. OK, you do that. The 3s cancel out, if you will. In other words, uh, they, they reduce and you get x is equal to 4. And just a quick note, the inverse of 3 is 1 third. Moral of the story is that if we want to solve the equation ax equals b 
for the matrix X. Since we know we can't divide by a matrix, what if instead we can multiply each side by the matrix inverse, which would be denoted by this. So it begs the question, you know, if, if we decided to go this route where we multiply each side by an inverse, then maybe this is something that we can do. All right. But I'll let you know. Uh, it is something that we can do, and it really is um, how we would approach solving a matrix equation. But just like zero doesn't have a multiplicative inverse, there are going to be some matrices that don't have multiplicative inverses. One of our main topics of this course is determining when a matrix will have an inverse, and in addition to that, constructing the inverse. And I'll let you know ahead of time, it's not as easy as reciprocating all of the matrices entries. Okay, there are some cases where that will work, but in most cases, the inverse is much more involved in constructing it. All right, so just a little foreshadowing there. But with that, let's at least get some practice with converting a system into matrix equation format. Okay, the goal here in this problem is to write the equation AX equals B format. Yep, go ahead with the question. I'm sorry, I was late in class, but I'm not able to find in which page are we in right now. We're on page five of section 1.3. Okay, thank you. No problem. So our goal here is to write the system as AX equals B. Now the matrix A is going to consist of the coefficients of the variables. All right, now there are three variables, okay? And we have three equations, so the coefficient matrix will be a three by three. And in the first row, we'll go the coefficients one, one, and negative one. The second row will be four, negative three, and two. Last row will be two, negative two, and negative three. Now we're able to jump quickly from the system to at least constructing the coefficient matrix in this way because all of the variables are lined up. Okay, they're all organized in you know their own separate columns, if you will. Um, if you find that any variables are out of order in your equation, then simply rewrite the equation so that you know all your x's go first, then all your y's, and all your z's. All right, that'll help you form the correct coefficient matrix. Directly to the right of this is going to be a 3 by 1. And the reason why I know it's a 3 by 1 is because that's the only kind of matrix that'll work if you're multiplying uh, it by a 3 by 3. Okay? Because the end result of this product should be a 3 by 1 because there are three unknowns. Or I'm sorry, three constants. Now, this is the column matrix of unknowns or column matrix of variables. Since the first variable in your equation going from left to right is x, that's going to be the variable in the first row. The next variable in your equation is y, so, that, so that's going to be the variable in your second row, and the last variable is z. Now this is going to equal a column matrix of constants, and there are three constants, hence a 3 by 1, hence the reason why I needed the column matrix of variables to be a three by one. That way the inside numbers match and I get a resulting size of three by one. Now the constant values are negative one, 16, and five. So I'll order them according to that. And boom, there's our matrix equation. Any questions about the solution to this example or anything else that we've done on this page?